swelling bad? No, swelling's not bad. Swelling is an important part of healing. The reason we get a lot of swelling somewhere is because the body goes, oh my goodness, something's damaged quickly, that send loads of fixing agent there. So swelling is full of fixing agent. The problem is, it's also full of something called, called scar tissue. The reason we need scar tissue is because the body's like, right, we've got this patch of damage, we need to plaster it up and fix it. So what it does is it throws this tissue down in cross um, patterns, like a spider's web. Um, with a muscle or a ligament or any kind of tissue, there's a certain direction that the fiber should run in. Um, so for instance, in my forearm, they're probably gonna mostly be in this direction unless there's one into rotation. So we wanna make sure that we maintain those and get rid of those crossing the other way. Um, so the problem is if we allow the scar tissue to build up, it can reduce the flexibility of the joint or the tissue. So that's why I'm saying let's try and get that inflammation down and try and encourage the mobility into the wrist after a sprain rather than splinting it. So um, a couple of things you can do. First of all, just rest the arm down on perhaps a pillow next to you, easing the tissue um, fluid back up towards the um, shoulder here. Now we do this really lightly, use this kind of contact, rest it on the arm while it's supported, and then you're gonna drive it gently up. It's very light pressure this, and um, it should be just affecting the skin surface really. And if there's a lot of fluid there, usually you'll see a bit of a wave of fluid returning to the elbow, past the elbow, and up towards the arm here. The reason I want you to take it to here is because there's lymph nodes here, and these lymph nodes will take that, that swelling away. If we take it part way up the arm, it's gonna drop back down to the arm. So I want you to encourage it all the way up towards the lymph nodes, which will then take it away and reabsorb it. So that's to get the inflammation down. You can also get a bit of moisturizer and just work through the wrist here. So again, while it's supported, I'm just putting it here so you can see it. I want you to kind of cross friction across like this and right, right through the here. And you might find some tender spots and that's okay as long as they're sort of up to about three out of 10, but don't push it past that. There is a fine line between damage and sort of breaking down tissue. And breaking down tissue and working on the, the area that's injured is sensitive, but we don't want you to be like, ah, ah, that's really painful, that is too much. So three out of 10 maximum aggravation level. Um, the other thing you can do is just look at your mobility. So elbow is parallel, so we haven't got any um, difference there. Um, and then we're gonna flex the palms down. Ideally, they should be nice and symmetrical, but you might find that one comes to about here, the other one's down here. Don't panic, that's gonna change, but we can just use that as a guideline to see how it's improving over the next few days. Generally, we want pain to drop, so the fact that you say it's gone from nine to seven out of 10 is fantastic. Um, we just want it to drop and drop and drop. We don't want it to plateau or to worsen. Um, and we want to make sure that there's no fracture or, or, or serious tear in there. But I think, I'm hoping you've probably got a grade one, grade two um, sprain. So once you've done your flexion, we're going to look at the extension, any restrictions there. And then facing um, away from you with the palms, driving the thumbs in together. And we're looking at the symmetry there. And driving fingers, little pinkies out. Um, and looking at symmetry there. Again, you're probably going to find that one's a little bit more restricted than the other um, into each range. Um, which is absolutely normal when we've, we've injured the area because it is swollen and, and damaged. Right, the next thing we can do is I just want you to encourage the motion. So you're going to go through the same motions we just did to test for mobility and, and symmetry um, and just, just keep testing those planes and encouraging it nice and slowly. So you're going to go flexion, extension, got that order deviation, little finger to forearm, thumb to forearm, um, radial deviation. Now, with those ones, if it's too sore, a good trick is to get something to support your arm on next to you. Again, try not to have your shoulder sort of shrugged because we don't want to stress that out a little bit. So this is a little bit high for me, so I'm going to kneel a bit. Rest the arm on there. Hand's going to be off the edge. And then I want you to take your other hand and you're going to gently move the wrist for your right or, or bad arm, with, with, not sure which side it is, and take it down. This way, you're not switching on the muscles in here. Um, so if, if you imagine I'm holding my arm here, to get my arm to stay here, I'm activating all of my shoulder girdle. If I say to myself, right, I'm not gonna switch this on, this hand's gonna physically lift it, um, then this left arm's doing all the work, this is floppy. Um, so that's what we're thinking here. This is floppy, it's not actively doing anything, but we're going to passively use our left arm to create the motion into the joint there and test it. Again, we're taking it to a maximum of three out of 10 in aggravation level. Um, we don't want it to be severe pain, but we also do want to test it and test the boundaries and encourage that motion there.